The Thieves Guild by Jake Kerr Episode 12 Off to Prison Rafe regained consciousness while being dragged down the steps of the merchant tower. The first thing he noticed when he opened his eyes was the second-floor tapestry that featured an old shopkeeper selling a tapestry of an old shopkeeper selling a tapestry. The scene repeated itself over and over within the threads in a masterwork of weaving. It had been months since he had visited Raylan in the merchant tower and passed the amusing scene. Rafe doubted he'd ever see the inside of the merchant tower again. His attention was wrenched to his captors as one of them adjusted his grip by yanking his arm forward. He cried out in pain at the force on his shoulder. Looks like the brown cloak is awake, someone said from ahead of Rafe. He was dragged down a few more steps and then dumped on the marble floor. Rolling into a sitting position, Rafe rubbed his shoulders. They were stiff and sore, but didn't seem damaged. He lifted his hand to feel where Sachs had kicked him in his head, but moving his arm above shoulder height was too painful. Maybe I'm hurt worse than I think, Rafe considered as he looked up. Two knights stood above him. They were in their formal armor with the bright white leather and the thicker white robes with the golden trim. The bruises seem an improvement, Jace. The one on the left said. He was smiling as he said it. The one on the right nodded. There's at least some blue, much better than that filthy brown shirt. Without looking at Jace, he added, Maybe we should remove the shirt and cover him with more bruises. Rafe clenched his fists, remembering the previous Founder's Day, when he had faced the same line of commentary from knights, right before they humiliated and beat him. Unlike then, he didn't remain quiet. You have no authority to punish me. I am awaiting my guild colours and my guildmaster will decide my punishment. He hoped his words sounded forceful and confident. The two guards looked at each other and then began laughing. You just humiliated every guild in the city at the banquet. What guild would possibly have you now? The one named Jace said. The other added, And whichever guild was foolish enough to accept you, I'm sure they have kicked you out by now. I am a member of the Thieves' Guild. Rafe's voice was louder and more confident. The unnamed one to the right chuckled. It really doesn't matter what guild you invent for yourself. Guildmaster Sax is going to deal with you himself. So get up. We're taking you to the dungeons, and I don't feel like dragging you there. Rafe didn't move. Finally realizing that he didn't intend on getting up, Jace stepped forward and kicked Rafe's leg. As Rafe cried out and grabbed his shin, the knight leaned down and grabbed the front of his shirt and pulled him up slightly. Rafe could smell the wine on his breath. Listen, brown cloak, we're supposed to take you right to the dungeons, but if you don't cooperate, Sam and I may have to take some time teaching you obedience. We may get disciplined for being late, but if you're going to make us late anyway, at least we'll have some fun out of it. He clenched his fist and pressed it firmly against Rafe's cheek. Nodding, Rafe scrambled to his feet. They secured his hands with manacles, and with Jace in front of him and Sam behind, they escorted him through the front gate of Merchant Tower. There was a white wagon of the night protectors waiting at the road. It was the kind they used for drunks and the poor people that wandered into the north part of the city from the flats. Jace opened the wooden door, and Sam shoved Rafe in. A few slits in the wood let in meagre light, the coach itself was nothing but bare wood. There were no stools or benches. Rafe sat in the corner of the wagon as it started down the road. He could feel every bump as the wheels pounded on the cobblestones. Surrounded by darkness, dust and the smell of vomit, Rafe closed his eyes and wondered if Raylan would save him. 